here at our R&D facility where we have our dyno and we test bikes. We strap the new GSX 8S onto our dyno. It's one of the first in the area. So hopefully we can get some stuff done quickly. So you guys that are considering purchasing the, this machine can have appropriate info before you make that decision. Now, I've ridden a whole host of different bikes and I gotta say, this thing is smooth, it's torquey, it looks great. I'm really excited about this because Suzuki really hasn't released anything substantially new in a long time, substantial new design. And this is really in the embodiment of their design prowess. Now, other manufacturers keep remixing the same technology over and over. These guys stepped up to the plate and brought in technology like up and down quick shifting standard. The transmission is super tight and smooth. The torque comes on, like it, it really jars you. So I'm really excited for you guys to check out this video. Let's get some runs in. Let's break this thing in. Let's heat it up. I'll put some power down. I'll put some, uh, some sensors on and we'll see what this thing has. Here on this side, I have three graphs overlaid, ready for discussion. I did multiple runs. I just chose these because these look to be the most consistent among the different samples I took. I, I did about 35 runs after I heated up the bike and everything was up to temperature. I did some break-in runs. Now, these are the most representative of what I found. So, I have three different graphs here. They belong to three different power modes in the selector. The two green ones, dark green and bright green, they look to be pretty identical at, on this scale, which means to me that the only difference between power mode A and B is just the modulation of the throttle, how fast it comes on. It has nothing to do with peak performance. Now at full throttle, in mode C, this looks to be something I would consider rain mode. The bottom end here up to 7,500 RPM is pretty neutered power wise and torque wise. This bike is very, very torquey. So mode C will smooth that bottom end for you and make riding around in the rain a little bit easier. Now that being said, you know, we're going from crazy torque values of 50 plus to 49. We have 52 foot pounds here versus 49 foot pounds here, 50 and a half versus 53. So not that big of a difference, but it is quite a bit smoother. You don't see these bumps here. So that will smooth out the, the torque delivery and make maneuvering in challenging conditions a little bit easier. Now let's get back to the meat of things. We have the main power curves of A and B. What I'm seeing here is a peak power of right around 77 to 77 and a half. That's what I was seeing across all my runs. It's happening right around 9,000 RPMs. But if you observe all of this, this, this is magic right here. 
Most bikes and most motor configurations don't do this. What you'll see is a big peak and then drop off. It falls down on its face. Now this thing just keeps on cruising. And what I noticed about shift points, when you go from about 10,000 RPMs, which is pretty much at red or close to red, it shifts you down to 8,500. So anywhere in this range, if you shift from anywhere here to here, you're still getting pretty much the same horsepower. And once it gets up here, it's pretty much linear. This to me is magic. This is mastery in design. Now, this number, I know a lot of guys out there will be like, well, for this amount of money that I spent on this bike, I could potentially go and buy a fill in the blank that has more power. I think that this bike is quite neutered out of the factory. Now we are gonna put this on a racetrack, so we are gonna unlock some potential. We are working on getting into the ECU already. We'll see how it's restricted and how to unrestrict it. Now we don't have any exhausts ready to go just yet. Our partner company network has not pumped any out. I think that's about to change in about a couple of weeks. I believe Yoshimura already had the pleasure of working with this bike, so hopefully we'll get an exhaust soon. Then we can throw that on and see what difference that makes. We're already working on an aftermarket filter, an air filter for this bike to see if that will help the performance any. We'll see once we get into unrestricting and tuning, we'll start doing that pretty soon. For now, this is just an analysis of what we've got out of the factory. I've switched us over here to the speed graph. For those of you guys that are interested in what the top speed is and what the top speed of each gear is on this motorcycle, this is where I'm going to demonstrate that. First gear will get you up to right about 44.22, 44.24 miles per hour. In second gear, we get up to about 66 and a half miles an hour. Third gear will get us to 87 and three quarters. We're right about 105 for gear four. In fifth, we're going 120. And at the top of sixth gear, we are reaching just over 138 miles an hour. Plenty of speed to rip your head off without a windscreen. I think this bike is poised for a very broad range of use. I think 138 miles an hour is a little bit excessive on that, but that sixth gear is very practical. Once we get homologation for some uh, race circuits, uh, we will be putting on a proper bodywork set on it and testing it out at the track. Then we can definitely take advantage of it. But even for street use, even at that speed, uh, you can technically hold on, you probably don't want to. Um, but that six gear and the transmission ratios on this bike are very, very well constructed and designed so that during commuting, you have the ability to cruise at a lower RPM with nice uh, fuel consumption. And then should you need the power, you drop a gear, boom, you're off. The quick shifter on this bike is very notable. Up and down, it's super smooth. I've, I haven't felt anything like this, except for very, very high-end aftermarket race parts. This comes to you standard with the bike. It's, it's amazing. On top of that, another notable part of the transmission is the shift shaft. It is made in a much larger diameter than most others for this class bike, and that will aid in positive shifting along with the electronic help. So that's pretty much all I've got for you. I can't wait to bring you more content, but right now, this is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative. If you did, drop me a comment, hit the like button. I love to hear from you. So please always drop me a comment. I love to start conversations. Check out tsdindustries.com. We already made a whole bunch of parts for this bike and they will be trickling into the market really soon. We also have other parts for other bikes you may have in your stable. So check us out, tsdindustries.com. See you later, ride safe.